moly, do we have some spaghetti to our left here. On this episode, we're looking at the wiring harness for John's, our little John's uh, LS swap into his uh, blazer. And uh, John, take it over. What do we have going on here? And I see you got a lot of papers here. What's going on? Well, this harness actually came out of a 2004 Silverado. Uh, this had the fly-by wire, uh, not fly-by cable. Um, so we're also doing some other modifications to this harness, which we'll kind of get into later. Uh, but all this is just diagrams, wiring pinouts, connector views, uh, everything that needs to be done, both from the 5.3 aspect as well as to the S10 blazer setup. So all this paperwork basically is for this harness specifically. Oh, let me take a time out there for just a second. We're not going to stop the video, but I got to ask a question. Do you have to be an electrical engineer to understand what's going on here? No, you don't. Uh, but there is basic knowledge that does need to occur, which we'll go over. Um, basically, the, the knowledge is, is knowing power and grounds. Uh, knowing that your wiring harness has to have some kind of power it goes through a switch or a sensor and then it goes to the PCM and the PCM either controls the ground um, or in some aspects uh, the, the computer just recognizes that the voltage change based off of a, a magnetic sensor or a Hall effect sensor or something similar to that. Alright, so if you don't know what a PCM is, if you don't know what a BCM is, uh, what are your options to do this? Uh, there's a lot of information out on, on the internet, uh, but you're basically, there's uh, your PCM, which is your powertrain control module, uh, your BCM, your body control module, uh, transmission control modules, a TCM. Um, you got your throttle body control module on some of the newer stuff, which this harness originally had. Um, there's basically you kind of milk your way through it if you have just your basic computer knowledge. If it ends with an M, it's a module. Um, P is for powertrain, uh, T is for transmission, B is for body, uh, ABS is anti-lock brake system. Uh, so you don't have to be an electrical engineer, uh, but you do have to kind of understand how uh, electrical and, and the diagrams, which you can do off of uh, the internet. You got to know Ohm's law and things like that, which you can find online. All right, so if somebody didn't want to go through all this and try to work its way, their way through that and didn't want to save a dollar or two, are there options? Are these harnesses available out in the interwebs? Yes. These, this harness, uh, they offer, uh, uh, there's multiple places online. Uh, eBay offers them pre-built. Uh, Painless uh, makes one as a standalone harness, so if you're putting this particular setup in a old uh, Nova or or something older, you can buy just a standalone, which is going to come already ready to go, ready wired up. So the only thing you have to do is literally supply power from the battery, and you run a, a couple of wires, and you're ready to go. Uh, Painless does make that setup, and you buy the PCM pre-programmed, which you know it, they're they're not really expensive, uh, but I didn't want to spend the the four or five hundred bucks to to buy the harness. And I wanted to, to let make this harness work in my application where I still have uh, the communication with the entire vehicle. Alright, so because you have some things that you're wanting to do, and because you're trying to save a dollar or two, you decided to go ahead and take this on, and because you got the knowledge with electrical. Right, I, I'm an ASC certified in electrical. Um, I'm also certified with General Motors as well as Ford. Uh, so I have a very good knowledge of the electrical system. Um, that and I love General Motors, so I was able to, to do this pretty easy. Uh, it literally took me uh, about four hours to tear all the harness down and remove components that I don't need uh, because this vehicle is, this 5.3 is not equipped with EGR. Um, this harness did have an EGR, uh, which by uh, the EPA and federal regulations, this particular motor out of a 2005 did not have an EGR. Uh, this harness did. So by law, I don't have to put it on there because my original application did not have uh, the EGR system. So every state's different. Our, our state in Florida is not required um, and I don't have California emissions. 
uh, or New York or anything like that. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I also removed the evaporative emissions, which is basically taking the unburned fuel from the vapor tank and putting it into your intake. There's no need for this. Um, it's just something for the EPA. There's no EPA regulations here in Florida, uh, but there's no sense in having it as long as you have the correct uh, release pressure in the tank. Uh, there's no issue of expansion or anything like that. Uh, so there was some harnesses that I did remove uh, that was not needed for this application. All right, so basically what we're saying is you gotta know your rules, gotta know your laws for your state. Uh, you gotta have familiarity with um, uh, electrical, electrical uh, components and so on and so forth, especially when it comes to the inside workings of the car, if you're gonna take this on. But if you're not, there are options for you out there through painless wiring and other places. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in here and uh, see what we, if we can make something out of all this spaghetti of wires. Okay, this is the PCM connector. As you can see, uh, we have kind of taken all the, where I can access the pinouts. Uh, the, this particular setup, the PCM was on the driver's side. On my S10 Blazer, it is on the passenger side. So after we pulled all the wiring loom, I have pulled this to the side. That way I have my PCM set back on the passenger side of the vehicle. Now the downfall is, is this connector right here. This is your main power. This comes right off your fuse block. So this connector feeds the entire power for the entire system. So this feeds power for the PCM, all your sensors, the fuel injectors, even your coil packs. So this, this right here has to be modified or the pins have to be removed to make it work in my application. Now, what we're going to have to do from here, because this is designed to be close to the PCM, is we're going to basically cut this harness here and relocate this power back over to the passenger side close to my fuse block. So we're going to have to add quite a few feet to this particular setup. What's with all the green tape? The green tape. Okay, when you're taking basically the entire harness apart, I have them labeled of what goes where. Uh, this particular, because I know from my previous build uh, that some of these wires are not used. Um, for example, this wire right here is for um, the fuel injection system. It will go back on, but because my four cylinder that I originally had in my yellow S10, the V6 has a different location. So that's why this is sitting out because I know it's going to have to go back in here, but I got to go back into my blazer setup in that fuse block to make sure it's going in the right location. Um, so that's why the green tapes there is so I can identify which power wires these are to plug them in correctly into the block. Okay, this is the park neutral switch for a General Motors. Uh, tech tip, They're, these are glued into place from GM. Uh, what they do is they actually glue it in place so it doesn't allow moisture to get in and it locks it in place. Uh, as you can see, the, the people who pulled this harness uh, broke the sensor. Um, I'm actually not going to be using this uh, because I don't like the setup. So in order to get these connectors out, you got to take a heat gun or something uh, to apply low amounts of heat to release the, the glue inside. So if you're pulling a, a GM park neutral switch on a 4L60E uh, or a 6, uh, 4L80E, uh, take a little bit of heat around a connector. Uh, that'll release the glue, make it easier to go out. Um, I'm not going to use this setup. My 04 has the new style, which is uh, kind of like a bayonet style, uh, where it's one plug. Uh, so we're actually going to take this part out completely and put my setup from my current blazer. Uh, the other thing is, is this is the actual plug that goes into the transmission for the valve body, for the uh, solenoids, your torque converter clutch, uh, your one, two solenoids, that's all computer controlled, unlike the 700R4, the turbo 400, turbo 350s, which is pressure control. Uh, this is all electronic. So we've got to have this for the automatic setup. Uh, if you don't have an automatic um, or you're running an old school setup, the 700R4, uh, Turbo 400, Turbo 350, even a power glide, you won't need this. Uh, you'll just need just the engine harness itself. 
All right, this is the mass airflow sensor uh, connector. Uh, this one, it kind of varies where you want to put it based off of your application. That's why it's so long, so GM can decide where it wants to go, whether it's the Corvette setup or a truck setup uh, or even a custom setup. Uh, so this is going to be kind of left to the side. Uh, it's going to get wrapped up in loom. Um, I'm going to take my intake and push it off to the passenger side. So that's why this is sitting over here so I can go right into the mass airflow sensor. Uh, the other wires over here is for your crankshaft position sensor, which is behind the starter. Um, you're also going to have your uh, starter wire, uh, which is your purple wire here. Um, it's all going to be on this side, so we're going to kind of wrap this up together. And these here are for the air condition. I got to have air condition. So we got your plug from the compressor itself and a AC pressure switch. Uh, this is the high side pressure switch. Uh, which is going to go uh, right there on my application. I'm going to put it on the high side pressure line. Um, so that's why these are sitting over to the side. Uh, other quick notes here is these are the setup for the injectors. Um, they're pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, you got the eight, uh, four injectors on this side. Uh, this is bank two. So uh, when you're reading the harness, make sure you got bank two. Uh, your ignition coil packs um, is a single connector. Uh, this is for bank two. Uh, luckily with GM, uh, it has uh, two connector setups, one for your primary uh, and then one that goes to each individual coil. Uh, coil unplug setup. Uh, this is technically a round setup. Uh, they offer two different styles, round and square. I like the round style just because I have a little bit more uh, room it sits a little bit closer um, so that's pretty much what's going to happen uh, on this side besides the PCM to go over to the passenger side okay uh, obviously we're not using this intake but it's giving me a good reference of where things are going uh, traditionally we'll have an alternator over here uh, traditionally on the five threes um, we're going to do a little bit different setup, which we'll get into when we get ready to install this into the motor. Uh, so right now we've got the coolant temp sensor, which I got to get a new plug, uh, sits right here. Um, the alternator plug, uh, the guys cut it, uh, probably because they needed it for their own equipment. Uh, so we got a new plug there. Um, we're going to leave this like it is because I don't know which way I'm going to go yet with my accessory brackets. Uh, I'm going to try a couple different options, uh, so we're just going to kind of leave these hanging loose to the side. Um, now, because we are no longer running a fly-by wire, we're going to a fly-by cable, which is a 100% cable drive like your old school setup. So, uh, I know on the fly-by cable or cable drive, uh, my throttle position sensor and idle air control valve is all on this side. So uh, this particular application, I got to run all new wires from the throttle body to the PCM. Uh, I'm going to reuse the original harness for this cable or for the cable for the flyby wire. So this is going to come out, but I, I got a whole bunch of wires that we took off of this. Uh, so we're going to use those wires to run my idle air control and throttle position uh, when we get the new intake and throttle. Uh, yeah, intake and throttle body on, uh, we'll be able to fin finish the, the wiring for this section here. But we can go ahead and pre-run everything for this setup uh, because I have an idea of where it's going to go. I'm going to tell you kind of what we're, we're objective is here uh, is one, we're going to slowly work on the wiring loom. Uh, we're going to get everything kind of nice and neat we're going to slowly start to extend everything but i really don't want to put this in full wire loom yet uh, and the reason why is because i want to make sure everything is nice tight and clean uh, so that way when i get ready to drop it in i just put the the harness in and we're done so uh, we're going to kind of take some zip ties set everything in place uh, where we have an idea of where we want it 
and then we're going to go and uh, do some wiring loom on stuff that I know is going to be in the same exact spot. Uh, for example, the, the main uh, transmission harness for the internal, that's going to get wired in, that's going to get loomed in, because I know that's going to be the same. So we're going to get this uh, kind of figured out a little bit more. This is just a breakdown of what we've done. So we're going to start to extend the wires um, and get the loom on, and that's our project.